Welcome to the Global Discussion, a discussion with creatives, leaders and thinkers. My name is Simon Hodgkins and today I'm joined by Simon Penson. Simon, you're very welcome to the show. Before we get into our discussion today, let me start by asking you, maybe tell us a little bit about Simon Penson. Tell us a little bit about your background and what you're involved in today. So over to you, Simon. Well, thank you for obviously inviting me, Simon. We clearly share a great name between us, so that's a good start. Uh, well, what am I involved in? So where do I start? I think, you know, keeping a long story as short as possible without, you know, boring everybody to death. I, I started life, I was born at the right time, so I came into the workforce when the internet was becoming a thing in the sort of mid-90s and uh, was a journalist originally. That taught me a lot about how, you know, people's kind of... Um, preference about where and how they found information was shifting and you know that kind of was a bit budgy in the mine shaft from a you know kind of the internet is going to be important kind of perspective and so built uh, ultimately a fascination with that space um uh, and that ended up me building and ultimately selling a small collection of um what became content affiliate sites um in the early 2000s uh i then became you know, like almost by accident, really, a consultant stroke um, agency founder that and that agency ended up growing pretty significantly. Um, and we exited it, well, sold it in 2016, exited it in 2020 um, to enter public. Um, and, you know, what was, you know, a pretty significant exit, learned lots and made loads of mistakes, obviously, through all of that. And uh, more latterly, I've kind of been more involved in two things, really, which is all combined into help, you know, facilitating me helping others, you know, trying to make that journey themselves a little bit easier. One is a VC business um, that, you know, I helped build and have actually recently exited. Um, and another is kind of the consultancy piece in also helping them people do that, particularly in B2B, really. And, um, yeah, as I said, you know, I think we were talking before the uh before the uh, intro that, uh, you know, it, I'm very lucky in the sense that none of that feels like work anymore, which is a nice thing to have found. Well, that's great. And thanks very much for giving us that sort of quick uh, introduction. Now, you've packed an awful lot into that, though, because I'm sure there was a lot of blood, sweat and tears, as the saying goes, over the years. And you've had a number of successful exits. You know, you you've developed businesses and you've got this kind of double strand to your bow now where you've kind of got this VC thing over here, you've got this consultancy over here. But ultimately, when you look at your role today, you're really interested in helping businesses, aren't you, through the trials and tribulations. Could you maybe expand a little bit on, on that work in particular mm -hmm. for us, Simon? Yeah, uh, it's actually really important to me. And um, the, the reason for that is actually, it's a, it's a longer conversation. But I think when, when you when you have a significant exit, certainly, you, you know, it asks a lot of questions of the entrepreneur, because, you know, it's like, well, who are you really, you know, like, take away the business, which was kind of part of, you know, who you were, and who are you really, and it asks very deep questions that people don't perhaps forewarn you or prepare you for, actually. So that's an important point if people are thinking about existing, definitely think, you know, what you're going to do next. Um, seems obvious, but, you know, it's a quite a deep question to answer. And so I was lucky because obviously we, we'd we been building sort of almost concurrently the back end of um, our agency. And now we've been building um, what became a VC business. And so I was able to throw myself into that. And I think that, you know, really helped the founders that we backed. And, you know, that did a couple of things. One, it validated the lessons that I learned over there from, you know, building. Because obviously, you quite normally, you survive when you're building a business rather than do it, you know, strategically. But then, of course, you see that reflected in the mirror through others and their experiences. And you go, well, actually, that's interesting because that's not such a problem because I did this and fell over and did that and fell over and then eventually did this and it worked. Why don't you just go and do that? And, you know, that process also... I really genuinely loved because it really felt like I was starting to give back a little bit and, you know, I had the freedom of choice and to choose what I wanted to work on. And, you know, I very, very quickly found it through that process. And so, you know, the consultancy came alongside that because, you know, I had more capacity and wanted to help more people. And then more latterly, um, you know, I've, I've started to kind of build relationships in the kind of the slightly later stage PE space um and you know now support them through kind of you know acquisition and investment and you know increasingly going to be getting more involved in that world so yeah it's a um it's been a great journey learned a lot about myself first and foremost and, and what and how important purpose is um and yeah it doesn't feel like work which is you know i guess the best thing possible you can say about 
working, isn't it? It's a, it's a wonderful place to be in and congratulations obviously on the exit and everything you've learned along the way and it is it's always refreshing to hear Simon when a, a founder come successful exit type experience turns into that helping other businesses helping other people that are trying to scale and obviously through your business which is called scaled um, you you are providing that service but you also sit on a number of boards you know with this whether it's the the m a experience that you have and the, the VC work that you're doing. And I'm just interested, just from a time management perspective, you've been, I'm sure, the, the, the founder, the business owner, where there's so many things that need doing, you know, probably overworked, overwhelmed, underfunded, and everything else that goes into that, until you reach that positive piece where somebody does buy your organisation, where you have a nice exit, et cetera. And I know you, you're no stranger to that world. But how do you manage your time currently? Because you do sit on the boards of some companies, if I understand correctly. You are advising companies too, and you're also running your own sort of consultancy. So how important is time management to you? Do you have any tips or tricks that you've learned along the way? Because this is something I see more and more often, that whether it's senior leaders or whether it's business owners, everybody seems to struggle with this in some shape or form. Uh, yeah, I think it's a it's a very very important trait to kind of work on very early. And I was uh, I was lucky in that I, I I surrounded myself with kind of mentors and advisors um, through that whole process because you know you can't get there alone. So I was I, I've been lucky that I learned very early and realised very early that you know there's massive value in lived experience, and you know you can't well you can buy it, but you know you can't buy it for yourself um and that taught me very quickly the value of things like delegation knowing what you're good at and what you're not good at and filling those gaps with other people you know not being afraid to hire people better than you all of that kind of stuff so i've always hired sooner than most i think and you know accepted that there's a bit of risk in that but hired is the good you know is the best people i could possibly find and I very, very rarely if ever actually ended up regretting any of that because what it does do is it allows you to cast off all the stuff that you're either not very good at you don't enjoy you know you put to the bottom of your to-do list and never gets done so you can really focus on the stuff that you're really good at which you know like yeah and the stuff that you enjoy which to me is as i said spending as much time as possible with founders and senior teams and you know helping them solve things and you know also i think i have this kind of obsession with um inbox zero as well which helps so like you know like i don't want to switch off until i've you know i've answered every email every day and, you know, I think keeping on top of things like that is important because otherwise you can be overwhelmed and then prioritization becomes really, really difficult. So, I, you know, I don't, I, I've never really struggled with what may seemingly be a heavy workload because it doesn't have to be heavy if you organize it in the right way, if that makes any sense. Makes a lot of sense. And I think there are so many different facets, aren't there, in terms of the work that you do, I'm sure. So whether you're helping the leadership team, whether you're helping them raise funding, whether you're improving business processes. But the question I'm coming to is around technology, because over the, I don't know, last 10, 15 years or more, where you've successfully grown and sold businesses and you're now busy helping companies, as we've said, the technology has changed an awful lot too. And I know you have a particular interest in technology. Do you think it's easier now with the tools that we have? We're in a world of AI as we talk today. There's lots of tools out there, um, some paid, some free. But is it just as difficult as ever to scale a business or does the technology actually help us? Or is it a hindrance? What do, what are your thoughts on that, Simon? I, you know what? I think, you know, there is definitely such a thing as software bloat. I would definitely say that's one of the first things I look at within P&Ls because that tells me a lot about the business, um, how efficient it is and, you know, how well organized it is. Because I think there's a point at which software becomes, um, is a really good thing. And there's a point at which it becomes a problem. Um, you know, I think the software usually and AI to a degree, certainly at the moment, you know, kind of works well in the middle. I think there's some efficiency to be, to be gained, but you still need great people at the beginning and end of that process. And um, software, therefore, I think needs to be carefully selected, you know, because I think you see a lot of businesses where they've just got, you know, three or four or five different pieces of sales tech. They've got, you know, CRM, they've got a sales pipeline tool, they've got, you know, operations kind of project management tool, and you go, you go on and on and on. And, you know, I think less is more in some sense in that world. I think, you know, the key is the strategy and not the software. It's, you know, how good you are at the execution element. And 
people hide from execution a lot, I think. So, you know, I've always been a fan of, yeah, but what's the plan? As opposed to, you know, what's the MarTech stack look like, if that makes sense? Yeah, the, the tools often change, right? Um, but the tools are no use if the plan's no good. And that brings me nicely onto the next thing, which is about investing in people. And I think of people like Warren Buffett, you know, one of the world's greatest investors. And um, very often the conversation rapidly turns to, yes, it's a good business plan. Yes, it's a good idea but I've got to invest in the right people and it's the right founders. It's having the right people. As you were saying earlier, maybe hiring a little bit early and getting the best people around you. How do you do that as a business owner as a, as, or as somebody helping businesses to grow? Because people, you hear about it all the time. Everybody's got a deck that has a hockey stick in it and everything's going to be great in a few years time. Right. But people, VCs in particular, they, they invest in as much as the, the people as the idea am i right in saying that what's your experience yeah, of that yeah no you you absolutely i mean it obviously depends at which stage you're investing because uh, well, people are always important in almost every business right but of course you know they're really important at the very beginning because you know often you know particularly with um you know the kind of the, the vc business that you know i help build is you know we we existed um you know at kind of SAS, eis level which is you know very early money sometimes first money in and so some of those businesses are sometimes just ideas. They're people with, you know, a unique set of experiences that have led them to kind of have a unique view on a market where they've seen inefficiency or something. And they figured out a way to make it better. And um, that's great, you know, and often those people are very technical um, because obviously they're building quite often software or technology approaches to kind of creating that efficiency. Um, you know, which you know you so you need that skill set, but I think. You also need balance. And I think over the years, we've learned that, you know, like, yes, people are important and you can, you know, fall in love very quickly with an amazingly bright CTO. But, you know, we we always took the view that, you know, you need a commercialization as well. You need somebody commercial in that founding team, you know. So it's about balance. It's not just about one individual. It's about what balance does that kind of founding kind of team look like. And, yeah, you know, people are probably, you know, 70% of the you know the decision making process quite often because what else is there and so therefore you know you need to spend a lot of time doing your due diligence on them you know in terms of you know characteristics and personality and skill set and experience and so overall balance as well which I think is something that a lot of people miss yeah and I, I like the word balance that you use there uh, you don't hear that a lot and i think mm -hmm. that's so important is it that balance that sort of complementary skill sets maybe as you were saying again you know bringing somebody in that's maybe better at something that you are or can that can do something that you particularly don't want to spend the time on which frees up your expertise so i love the word balance and what about you know, when you invest in a team and the idea, you know, they're the right people, you know, they've got these business smarts that you're looking for, but maybe the business isn't doing well or they need to, in inverted commas, pivot the business or change the business. Is it you've backed the right people so they'll figure it out? Or, you know, how much do you have to get involved in that sort of change to a business when it's just not working out, but they are good people? <sighs> Yeah, I mean, it, that. I mean, pivots are, I think, you know, particularly for early stage pivots are very usual, I would say, rather than unusual. I think you, you know, you never really true, you know, truly know what product market fit looks like until you're in the market, you know, and you're testing it, you know, on a bit broader scale than, you know, you might ordinarily done with your MVP or something. So, yeah, that's that I think is really important. Um, and then the other side of that, and, you know, something that, you know, I think over the years you get a kind of a sixth sense for is, you know, like you say, like, is the team as good as, you know, even perhaps sometimes the senior team think it is. And, you know, one of the first things, you know, I often do, you know, certainly on the consultancy side is, you know, kind of people auditing and helping people really kind of think about that. Because, you know, particularly if you've grown a bit of a team and you've got 50, 100 people, whatever it is, how often do you really kind of, you know, retrospectively look back and go like, what does that look like now? Um, and, you know, you are only as good, particularly if you're in service, you know, I do quite a work, bit of work in B2B service business, you're only as good as your people and, 
you know, I don't think that we audit our people enough and think about that because obviously people change and, you know, like situations change and the stage of the business changes and what got you here won't necessarily get you there. And so, you know, I've always been a plan of kind of um, very objectively finding a way to kind of, you know, measure, you know, like who's round peg, round hole, who's round peg, square hole, wrong, you know, like, so are you a great person, wrong position? Um, and who's not on the bus, you know, who's not really with us for this or not capable of being with us for the next stage. And I think that's actually a really, really good and quite healthy thing to do on a you know, almost annual basis. And a lot of people miss that, I think. Yeah, I like to get the right people on the bus first and then obviously the right seats on the bus, right? Uh, so it sounds there's, there's a lot of that involved. And as you were, you're mentioning, with the early money, often a business will have to pivot or change or adapt what it's doing in the marketplace. And you need people that can actually do that too, because sometimes a founder can be so convinced that their idea is right and they persist and they persist when that actually a few smart changes, whether that's people or plan can make a heck of a difference, can't it? So thank you for sharing that. Um, if, you know, you were speaking to a group of, startups and i'm sure you do this i'm sure you you know you you speak to and look at a lot of business plans but if there was a room full of business people and you're you were tasked with sharing some hot tips that they could all take away from your own experience is there any sort of look guys just focus on this you must do that is there anything we could share with our audience here just off the top of your head when it comes to that sort of look this is core business advice you might have heard it before but it's really important yeah, I, they, they, yeah, there definitely is, and I, I think I'm constantly surprised by the lack of time people spend on go to market and really understanding what that means. And um, you know, it's never. I think it's never been more important because you know the world is more competitive. Every market is more competitive than it's ever been. You know, we are increasingly moving into a more specialist economy. So you know, you have to understand. You know, like how specialist can you be and how specialist should you be. Because you know you're you're ultimately you know you you exist businesses exist to solve customer pain, and so you need to understand that intrinsically back to front sideways in order to be able to really prosper in that market. And you know, many years ago when I was a journalist, I remember a publisher once saying to me, you know, a bit of advice for you, Simon. Um, if there's one thing you do, just stay as close as you possibly can to your audience. And I think that's always stuck with me because often it's lost in the melee, isn't it? It's lost in the noise. But I think, you know, you need to find a way of really spending time and interviewing clients properly and really understanding those, you know, like qualitatively and quantitatively what their kind of pains are right now and how they change over time. And, you know, the market that you serve, you're best at serving and all of that kind of stuff to um, then build a proposition that really resonates, right? And then a sales and marketing plan that resonates with that challenge. And, you know, people feel like you're there to help them and facilitate something so um yeah i would say go back to plan and think very carefully about go to market if you if you're struggling particularly at the moment because you know the, i'm lucky to have seen the inside of lots of different sorts of businesses now and you know those that have done well over the last 12 18 months when things have been more tough let's be honest are those that are really now go to market and are increasingly specialized i think in their approach at least to you know to to marketing itself and um and proposition you know when you're as we did you know we we had a very defined and quite narrow um go to market but then we actually built a full service agency behind the scenes because we can get suck people in the door with a, the biggest pain and then of course upsell cross sell them across you know the, all the services that they eventually wanted and needed us for um, so yeah, I think that would be my top tip. I like that a lot, Simon. Thanks for sharing that. That's great advice. I uh, really like that go-to-market uh, discussion. So as we think about the next 6, 12, 18, 24 months even, how does that work in your world now? Because I'd imagine it's a bit different from maybe 10 years ago. How do you go about planning? What's on your horizon? What are you thinking about for the future at this moment in time, Simon? It's a really good question because I think, like, you know, I'm an entrepreneur at heart and I think, you know, I've been an operator for a long time, but actually over the last, you know, probably five or six years, I've been much more of a, you know, kind of sitting on the investor, you know, board side of the business. And they're a different, sometimes aligned, sometimes opposing views and opposing kind of priorities. And 
I've I've really found it fascinating and learned a lot, you know, working with great people in both of the both sides of those um that kind of coin. And, you know, so I'm I'm really keen now to kind of sharpen my ability to kind of work best between those two things and make sure that, you know, a, a sort of a growth stage business, you know, really works well from a governance perspective, but also, you know, like bringing in kind of a bit more lived experience and, you know, finding ways to win hearts and minds and, you know, help those entrepreneurs that, you know, sometimes do know best, sometimes don't, you know, kind of listen to that advice because, you know, advice is only ever useful if it's actually put into practice. So, you know, really honing my skills around that. Um, And then also I think I've realized through the process over the last two or three years, particularly that, you know, that purpose piece is really important to me. I want to make a difference and I want to really be able to help. And so, you know, over the last sort of this year, really, um, probably back end of last year started, you know, the process of actually building more relationships with later stage investors. So those in private equity to to really help and support them on their journeys and, you know, buying into and investing into, you know, particularly B2B businesses that I know best. Um, because I think, you know, I've realized that, you can have much deeper relationships in that space because they put more money into fewer businesses. So you can spend more time in those businesses. And so I'm really focused, I think on that now is being able to kind of, you know, lean into and, you know, really help a kind of a smaller number of slightly later stage now. And um, as I said, you know, help them get onto the next stage. So yeah, that's what I'm um, considering and thinking about. Yeah, and that shift from sort of early stage money to later stage money as well is uh, a whole other different strategic play, isn't it, for businesses often, you know, uh, when when some more money comes in because they're past the proof of concept, they've got the market fit, things are going, and then they're thinking about going international, they're thinking about investing in more areas of their business. So very exciting times ahead, I'm sure. Um, before we run out of time, Simon, two questions from me. The first one is, uh, and it's an important one, is there anything else that you want to share with our audience while we have them today? Might be something we've spoken about or something completely new. And secondly, my second question is, if people want to find out more about you, the businesses, or maybe even get some consultancy from you or some help or some advice, what's the best place to send them to so they can actually reach out and uh, get in touch? Sure. It's a good question. Uh I would, I, I, it's slightly controversial this in some respects, but I think too many people jump into being, you know, business founders. They want every, every, you know, it's, it's a bit of a poster child thing now, isn't it? To be an entrepreneur and, you know, be your own boss. But, you know, I think very few people really understand what that really means and what it therefore takes to win because, and I do quite a bit of speaking at schools, actually, to kind of help students with this, because I think, you know, their TikTok and Instagram have really helps this picture. Everybody thinks that, you know, you can build a multi-million pound fortune in five minutes and, you know, go and away and on holiday for the rest of your life. But the reality, as we all know, right, is entirely different to that. And, you know, it takes a certain characteristic, you know, set of characteristics to be able to to live through the, you know, the the crap that you have to put up with for not just a month or a year, but 10 plus years, right? If you want to build something significant each and every day, whilst, you know, friends and everybody else is going and having great fun and, you know, they're having families and going on lots of holidays and, you know, you're stuck in a dark room, you know, working away thinking, you know, this is, this is insanity, but you've, that's what it takes, right? You have to have that level of determination and pig headedness or whatever else you describe it as to be able to, work harder and longer, you know, than anybody else to win and put up with the everything that's going to come at you along the way. And I think that reality check is a really key thing because, you know, the the thing that I hate to see actually is people that, you know, were really happy working for somebody else, but had this idea, this itch they felt like they needed to scratch because of what social had told them. And um, you know, then they go and jump into it and become miserable and, you know, it doesn't work and, you know, everything falls apart. And so I think think very carefully about you know, not just the glamour of it, but the reality of it, I think would be my my number one takeaway. Um, and then also, you know, I think, you know, like if people do want to chat, you know, I'm always happy to have, have them, you know, like this, this doesn't feel like work to me. So I spend all my time having these kind of conversations with people. And so if they do want to reach out, um, Simon at scaled.co.uk, or you can find me, Simon Penson on LinkedIn and happy to have a chat. So um, no, thank you, Simon, for inviting me on. I've, um, I've enjoyed it a lot. 
Well, listen, that's a great point to end on, and it brings us nicely to the end of our episode of the Global Discussion. I want to thank everybody who's watching or listening to our discussion here today and make sure that you follow, like, subscribe, do everything I need you to do to help support the show. And, of course, go and check out everything that Simon Penson is involved in. Um, and I hope you join me back here for some more discussions with creatives and leaders and thinkers just like Simon. But it's been a pleasure. Thanks for being on the show, Simon. Great to talk to you today. Thank you.